Ciao a tutti, I'm Francesco from Bed Dogs and I hope you're doing great. In today's video, I'd like to talk to you about Cargo, our variable load impedance device, a device that sits between the microphone and the preamplifier and that is especially designed to get every dynamic microphone sound better. If you are into the sound recording world, which I bet you are, you probably have a special relationship with your microphone and your preamplifiers, which are the essential tools to start a recording session. There are many microphones out there, each one designed to perform a particular task. So you might want to choose one or the other based uh, on your taste, on the sonic characteristics of the microphone, on to enhance uh, the sonic uh, features of the instrument that you are going to track. But one thing must be common among, uh, amongst all of them. They must all faithfully reproduce the sonic spectrum of the sound source that we are going to track. The same applies for the preamplifiers. They might have uh, a character on their own, but basically what we all want is a preamp that is low noise, that way we are not going to worsen the signal to noise ratio of our source, a preamp that reproduces uh, the source that we are going to track without much artifacts and has adequate gain to allow us to go to the mi uh, mixing stage um, with an appropriate signal level. So why a device that sits between the mic and the preamp and changes the impedance seen by the microphone? Why would you want that? Well, Let's analyze it from a more technical perspective and see if it makes sense, a device like that. Hi there! Before going to see what are the benefits that Cargo brings to your setup and workflow, let's have a look at it more closely. We already said that Cargo is a variable load impedance especially designed for dynamic microphones it sits between uh, the microphone and the preamplifier. You plug the mic output into the input XLR of cargo, and then you plug the output XLR of cargo into the preamp. Then you apply phantom power from your preamp to power the internal circuitry of uh, cargo. Yes, because cargo is also a class A discrete preamp. But do not worry, the phantom power will be not propagated to your microphone, so there is no chance that you can damage it. On the front then, you have the impedance knob that lets you change the impedance seen by the microphone from 150 ohms up to 40 kilo ohms, that is 40,000 ohms. On the back of the unit instead, you have a push button to engage a 25 dB boost. Okay, now that we've seen how cargo is made, let's talk about the benefits that it brings to your recording setup. Well, basically cargo improves uh, your setup in three ways. Impedance matching, sensitivity of the microphone, and top of the class preamp. Let's start with the impedance. What is it? The impedance is like a resistance that an AC signal, uh, a signal that is moving in time, encounters during its travel from one device to another, like from the microphone to the preamp. And uh, as a rule of thumb, um, a signal to perfectly and fully reach its destination must see an, an impedance that is at least 10 times bigger than that of the source. 
In other words, the impedance of the preamp must be 10 times, at least 10 times, bigger uh, that of the microphone. In fact, in that case, with just a bit of math, we can demonstrate that circa 91% of the signal is delivered from the source to the load, uh, which in the B terms is just less than 1 dB and therefore unnoticeable by the human hearing. If you're not familiar with this concept, you can have a look on the internet. I will leave a link at the bottom of this video for you to copy and paste and read it on your own time. Okay, so dynamic microphones, or whether it be them ribbon or moving coil like the famous SM57, work on the principle of magnetic induction. Basically, when you move a conducting coil within a magnetic field, uh, a current is generating on the coil, and therefore their output impedance has an inductive behavior. And what that means is that their output impedance changes with frequency. So now, by joining these two concepts together, we see that the impedance, the input impedance of the preamp must be at least 10 times that of the microphone all along the bandwidth that the microphone can reproduce. And that is not often the case with the many microphone preamplifiers. Let's take the Shure SM57 as an example. If you look at the datasheet, uh, you will see that his nominal impedance is about uh, 310 ohms. But if you plotted his output impedance against the frequency on a graph, you will see that uh, his output impedance will be going up at about 450 ohms at 150 hertz, then it will go down, it stays down for a while, and then it will start to climb up again at, a, at about 6 kHz up to 20 kHz, which is the bandwidth of the human hearing. You can see this behavior over here on the upper right corner of the screen. So even from this small example, it's evident that to fully reproduce the spectrum of the SM57, you will need a preamp with at least 5 kilo ohm input impedance, while many preamps on the market, the majority actually, have an input impedance from 2k to 3 kilo ohms. And this is even more pronounced with ribbon microphones, which have generally a very high output impedance. On this note, you can find more info at Royal Labs website or AEA website. And again, I will leave you some link at the bottom of this video so you can go and search for yourself. So what this means is that, although completely overlooked, it is very important to optimize the matching between the microphone and the preamp to operate the, mic the microphone at its full potential and allow it to fully reproduce its sonic spectrum. Another cool benefit that you can have by changing the input impedance seen by the microphone is that by loading the microphone with different input impedances you can experiment with the sonic timbre of your mic to find the best sound for your recording. So, it is really up to you how you want to exploit this variable impedance matter. The second aspect that Cargo allows you to address is the sensitivity of the mic. Most dynamic microphones have a very low sensitivity as opposed to condenser ones. So again, for example, the SM57 as a sensitivity of 1.6 millivolt per pascal, or the Bayer Dynamics M160, which is a ribbon mic, as a sensitivity of 1 millivolt per pascal. And what that means is that with a sound pressure level of 1 pascal, that is to say 94 dB SPL, the microphone will output 1 millivolt signal. If you amplify that by a thousand times, 
So 60 dB, which is the maximum gain of many preamps, you get one volt output signal, around 2.2 uh, dBU, which is barely enough to properly record a signal for mixing. With cargo, running out of gain is no more an option. With its 25 dB of high quality gain boost, you can get a normal sound card preamp to have as much as 85 dB gain, which is plenty enough to be able to record every microphone in the planet. The third point that makes Cargo an outstanding device is that it is also a professional, fully discrete Class A preamp. And you will find that the sonic quality of many preamps, in particular those of sound cards and small console, will benefit a lot by it, as though they are getting a new life. But that's enough talking, let's put Cargo to test and see how it performs. Ok, I've got a, a Focusrite 2i2 sound card, which I think is a good starting point for a home studio setup, on which I've plugged a, an SM57 microphone, uh, I've turned the gain to read on the dose meter around plus 4 dBU, and the potentiometer knob is around three quarter of rotation. I'm gonna do the same thing now with cargo to see what difference does it make to my voice. Well, now I'm doing the same thing as before. I'm talking to the SM57, except that now cargo is onto the signal chain, which means that from the output of the microphone, I'm going into cargo, and from the output of cargo, into the sound card. I've turned on the phantom power to supply cargo and I've depressed the 25 dB uh, gain switch on the back of the unit. Uh, that's why on the focus right the knob rotation is now less than halfway. If I turn the impedance you can hear that as I go lower the volume is getting lower because it is forming like uh, a voltage divider so it's like an attenuator but if I go back up with the impedance knob you can tell the uh, sound is getting richer my voice is getting back all the bases and all the heights is well more defined and um, so if I instead leave the bottom uh, on the back and press it again we see the volume is gone down so to get the plus 4 dBU as before, I'm now on 3 quarter of rotation, the same position as we were when cargo wasn't on the system, which means uh, cargo has 0 dB. Without the switch on the back, it's just passing the signal through and you get only the impedance changed uh, from the unit. Okay, I think the test speaks by itself. I will post this recording at the bottom of this video so that you can listen to them on your own time and on your own preferred setup and make an opinion for yourself. And uh, that will be all. I hope you liked this video and if you feel like it, please subscribe to our channel to stay in touch with us and um, with our news product launches, and much more. Ci vediamo alla prossima. Ciao a tutti.